In recent months, there's been a lively media conversation around the idea that global warming has somehow slowed down or stopped. It's based on a misunderstanding of the science. It's now 23 minutes past eight. Why isn't the world getting warmer, or at least as quickly as most climate scientists expected? We're still chucking out carbon dioxide, but for some reason in recent years, it's not been reflected in higher temperatures. The UK Met Office has revised down its forecasts, and although it says the long-term trend is still for warming, the global average temperature will have stayed roughly the same for two decades. In the case of a recent BBC broadcast, the journalist involved was gently but firmly corrected by Dr. James Hansen. Professor James Hansen is adjunct professor at Columbia University's Earth Institute. He's also uh, outgoing director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. He just recently announced his retirement and he's here with us in the studio. Good morning, Professor Hansen. Hi, good morning. How do you explain what's going on with temperatures? Well, I should correct what you just said. It's not true that the temperature has not changed in two decades. In the last decade, it's warmed only about a tenth of a degree as compared to two tenths of a degree in the preceding decade. But that's just natural variability. There's no reason to be surprised by that at all. This is a very interesting uh, uh, problem scientifically because we know that these hiatus periods uh, have occurred in the past. We see them in climate models. We see them in future climate uh, change. You still have greenhouse gases trapping heat in the system. The heat has to go somewhere. It's not going to warming up globally average surface temperatures. So heat uh, we've seen in the models is going into the deeper layers of the ocean. Josh Willis is an oceanographer at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. The data is showing us that the oceans have been warming up and really they've been warming up for most of the last 100 years. Um, there's no reservoir, there's no bucket so to speak, that's large enough to hold the amounts of heat that we're trapping on the planet besides the oceans. The oceans are the primary place where the extra heat is stored. Over 90% of the heat trapped by global warming is stored in the oceans. The biggest reservoir, the ocean, was the least well measured until more than 3,000 Argo floats were distributed around the world's ocean. These floats reveal that the upper half of the ocean is gaining heat at a substantial rate. The total energy imbalance now is about six-tenths of a watt per square meter. That may not sound like much, but when added up over the whole world, it's enormous. It's equivalent to exploding 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs per day, 365 days per year. But then the question is, what happens to that energy? Well, there's a lot of different places it can go. Some of it can indeed go into raising the surface temperature, warming the land, warming the atmosphere. And it doesn't take very much energy to do that. Some of it goes into melting Arctic sea ice. What we're seeing is a gradual progression towards an uh, ocean in the north that has no ice on it whatsoever in summer. Right now we're about 60% of the way there. Some of it goes into melting Greenland. Just in the last 12 years, we have a doubling in the sea level contribution of Greenland's melting. Heat that is melting ice caps or being drawn into the deep ocean does not show up on surface thermometers. But the planet has its own very sensitive thermometer, the oceans themselves, which show the planet gaining heat in the steady and measurable rise in sea level. The fastest rates of sea level rise any time in the last 2,000 years are the last 100 years. You have to remember that the oceans absorb over 90% of the heat trapped by greenhouse gases. So that heat as it enters the ocean actually causes the water to expand. Uh, warm water takes up more room than cold water and as we heat up the oceans we are directly causing sea level rise just from this thermal expansion of the water. So really, the oceans are our most accurate thermometer for measuring climate change. You know, if you look at the global temperature over the last 10 or 20 years, uh, there's lots of periods where we had a big warm year because we had an El Nino maybe, and a cold year because we had a La Nina. And it really, uh, it, it really causes global temperature to look noisy over time. 
If you look at the, the rate of sea level rise over the last 10 or 20 years, it's very steady, incredibly steady. If you plot global sea level rise over the last 20 years, what you see is the background trend from human-caused global warming. Scientists have been successful in communicating the idea that the planet is gaining heat. But they may have been too reliant on the easily understandable surface temperature record and fail to explain that there are many more important metrics of global change. One of the narratives out there in the last couple of years is that climate science is a house of cards resting on one or two killer observational data sets, land surface temperatures or ocean surface temperatures. We routinely look not only at land and ocean surface temperature, but we look at ice coverage, we look at ice thickness, we look at the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, we look at surface pressure patterns, we look at upper ocean heat content, we look at continental scale runoff from major rivers, we look at many, many different aspects of climate change, and they are telling us an internally and physically consistent story. The message in that story is natural causation alone can't explain the observed changes that we see. 